populations and educational research, where we're going to look at not only sampling, but also what particular types of populations are useful within your research. When you target a population, you need to know that populations are defined by their limits, whether that be the location, time, title, score, or any other factor for that matter. For example, a New York City teacher may not represent the global teacher community. Moreover, the findings of your study may only apply to New York City teachers from which a representative sample was taken. So in this example listed here where it says a sample of New York City schools, you were found that 5% were unsatisfied with their workplace conditions. You simply cannot say that all teachers worldwide are not content with their workplace environment. In essence, the findings point to the need for further research and nothing further. When we think about populations, there's three types of studies, inferential, descriptive, and analytical, and the following slides will detail each of these. Populations are defined differently depending on the context, so let's have a closer look at these types of studies. Within inferential statistics, a population is an entire group about which some information is required to be ascertained. A statistical population need not consist only of people. So when you select a population for a study, the research question or purpose of the study will suggest a suitable definition of the population to be studied in terms of location and restriction to particular age group, sex, or occupation. The population must fully be defined so that those to be included and excluded are clearly spelt out. For example, in our previous study that we mentioned on the uh, slide one, we talked about all teachers in New York City. We should state whether those teachers are included, uh, whether the teachers included in that study uh, include retired or part-time or non-practicing, or even those who have left the city but might still be registered or certified in New York. Those things are going to be necessary to include or exclude from our criteria. When we generalize, there are some things to consider as well in terms of sampling errors in particular. For example, generalizing from observations made on the workplace satisfaction of a sample of New York City teachers compared to the workplace satisfaction levels of all teachers in New York City is a formalized procedure using end-of-the-year district-wide surveys and so as far as the errors sampling or random to some extent can be calculated in advance based on the validity of the survey instrument. However, if we attempt to generalize further, for example, about the workplace satisfaction levels of all teachers in the whole country, we come into hazards and pitfalls which cannot be specified in advance. We do not know to what extent the study sample and population of New York City is typical of the larger population that of the whole country to which it belongs. Thus, these dilemmas within defining populations differ for descriptive and analytical studies. In descriptive studies, it's customary to define a study population and then make observations on a sample taken from it. These populations can be defined by geographic location, age, gender, etc. In field studies, it may be desirable to use a population defined by an administrative boundary, such as a district or state. This may facilitate the cooperation of the local administrative authorities and the study participants. Moreover, basic demographic data on the population, such as age, gender, and population size, and so forth, from the census data or a voters list are easier to obtain from administrative headquarters. However, these do not always consist of homogeneous groups. Since it is desirable that a modest descriptive study does not cover a number of different groups with widely ranging um, ways and life, uh, of life and customs, it may be necessary to restrict the study to a particular ethnic group and thus ensure better genetic or cultural homogeneity. 
homogeneity rather. Alternatively, a population may de be defined to a prominent geographic area, such as by the mountains or a river or the beach, and as such, we may <clears throat> impose a certain uniformity in terms of the way of life, attitudes, and behaviors upon people who live in these regions. Populations within analytical studies are known as the study group, which usually is not selected by sampling of a defined larger group. <clears throat> For instance, a study on students experiencing difficulties in learning a second language may include every non-native English learner attending Brooklyn High School during this study period. <clears throat> One should not forget, however, that in this situation there's also a hypothetical population consisting of all non-native English learners in the universe. When we think about case control studies, these are often carried out in school settings because it's more convenient and accessible in the community at large. However, the two groups of cases may differ in many respects, and it should be deliberated whether these differences would affect the external validity or the generalizability of the study. Usually, analytical studies are not carried out in groups containing atypical cases unless there's a special reason to do so. <clears throat>